Hello, oh, my dear neat lads. I get a lot of queries, especially in neat physics. Sir, can I just do NCIT and PYQs? Will it be enough or not? Give me a realistic uh, answer and uh, also tell me if I'm okay with this set of scores. Can I just do with this? Because I find physics difficult or sometimes you want that clarity in life that maybe I need to do something more or this much is good enough for getting a selection. So I'll give you an honest answer and give you with proper proofs and statistics as well. Okay, so answering to the first part, I'll come to NCRT first and then we'll go to PYQs. What role does PYQs have? And then we'll combine both of them and see how much score can you typically get in any neat paper. Okay, the answer for the first question regarding NCRT for physics is that yes, as well as no. See, NCRT is must, it is mandatory only relying on NCRT. Even if you do every single thing, including the index page also you do it. Still, you cannot ensure a selection. You cannot expect even a government college just doing NCRT. As a matter of fact, physics paper is full of problems. It's not statement. It is not a board exam. So you should understand you have to go beyond. But if you skip NCRT, then also it's a problem. That's why I said yes and no. And I will tell you the exact role of it. But before going ahead, make sure you are liking this particular video because YouTube understands then that, okay, this is a neat aspirant and this student needs more neat content. We'll keep you away from distractions. Second thing, subscribe to the number one neat English channel in the country. Do that right now. And thank you so much. Right. So talking about the, uh, you know, role of, uh, you know, NCRT. I have analyzed last five year papers and I've seen repeated, repeated, uh, you know, instances where questions from either summary or in text or back exercise or direct lines were picked up. Now, in fact, if you see also on YouTube or on the internet, you will find a lot of examples and many articles and videos as people are saying, oh, listen, this question came from NCRT and people think, oh, this video said NCRT questions come, so I'll only do NCRT. But you should understand the contribution of it. It's just 60% on an average in physics, directly and indirectly. Because there will always be some question. Obviously, it will be from the NCRT topic only. But you won't find exactly that question or even the twisted question in NCRT anywhere. It will be something way beyond NCRT. And that is what distinguishes high scorers and top rankers. If you're aiming for a government college, if you want to save your parents' money, obviously, you'll have to go beyond that. Or else, all the students who are preparing for CBSE in the country would be able to ace the need examination. They would be able to score really well in the uh, physics examination as well. But that is not the case. So, NCRT helps till a certain extent, but not completely. And it's mandatory to do NCRT also. And NTA will pick up the questions also based out of NCRT topics. What you should do in NCRT is read every line, every important paragraph, line, diagram, table, charts, you must do it. Also in-text questions and even summary, people skip summary thinking, oh, it's the same thing, repeat it. It will be the same lines. No, sometimes there are a lot of additional things. So many times I have seen in NEET exam, in-text questions were directly picked up, even without changing values. There are many instances where they have changed the values also. Now, if you are worried where to do this, well, we are doing this on YouTube, which we call as the NCRT line series for all the three subjects, physics, chemistry, biology in the evening. So make sure you are a part of it where we decode complete NCRT. Okay. So that's on YouTube on this channel. So that's why I asked you to subscribe or else you will miss all these amazing classes. Back exercises are also important. In fact, this we cover in our RNA series and you know, you might be seeing the solutions or maybe it was discussed in your school. So don't skip back exercise questions. There are really good questions. Many times they twist the questions and ask it. If you talk about exemplar, it's important, but it's not mandatory. Very few times they ask questions from exemplar and there are many questions in exemplar which are very difficult also, which can put you off, which can lower your confidence. So that's why if you have a good coaching module, it's okay to skip exemplar. Now, if you're thinking, sir, NCRT based questions, can I get a question bank? Can I get questions to practice? Well, I have seen over the internet, not many test series are based on NCRT. So we are giving you NCRT based year long test series with chapter wise tests, part tests, full syllabus tests, all India level ranking tests for revision, all of this, right? For you 
to score 700 plus. Now that link for this particular test series is there in the description box. It's available in three modes, either online or you can take the paper at home in offline pen and paper mode or you can go to the center and then write the exam. All the three modes are available. Check out the link in the description box. Okay. So that was the role of NCRT. And then you understood now NCRT alone won't give you selection. So let's talk about PYQs. So what role does PYQs have? See, I have analyzed a lot of papers and seen exact same question repeating does happen, but very rare. So if you find a video again, see this question got repeated from here. Don't get too fascinated. Okay. Because it is very rare. And similar model concept questions. Let's say, for example, they ask a question on logic gates, maybe AND gate truth table. Next year, they might again ask a question based on truth table, but instead of AND gate, it might be OR gate. So it looks very similar based on similar model or concept. And that gives you an idea that what is the examiner usually looking at? What are the different places the examiner looks at in the entire NCRT or in the entire syllabus? So it's good to have an idea. And if you also see in the recent years, some of the J mains papers were also, you know, uh, uh, picked for framing the neat paper, but not very difficult questions, the easy ones. So it's a good idea to even have a look at the J mains question papers, but not all the questions, the very easy ones. It also gives you additional practice. If you see the overall direct contribution of all these three factors, it is hardly 10 to 20 percent. Now this number looks small but remember there is indirect contribution and that is beyond 50 percent. When you solve multiple PYQs what happens is it opens up your mind into thinking how to solve an unseen question. How to solve that level of question. See do not expect exact same question but that level of question if you are able to solve there is a good chance in the exam also you will be able to solve a similar question, maybe from a different chapter. But the thinking ability kicks in. That is why you have to practice this. The contribution directly is there, but indirect contribution is definitely more. If you combine both of them, NCRT and PYQs, sir, then what is the realistic thing that we can expect? Let me tell you. See, if you do both of these along with the teacher notes wherever you are enrolled whatever series you are following the class examples if you do that that's the best combo just don't do ncrt and pyqs because understanding wise and uh, you know concept clarity wise that will only come through teacher notes and the class examples are always a good way to apply those concepts into problem solving so do these three things you might target 120 to 140 marks that is a realistic uh, approach okay so a lot of people might tell you, oh, sir, you can get what, you know, 180. I heard that. No, you can't get 180 just through PYQs and NCRT. You will have to push a little bit beyond, okay, to go above 140, 150 marks. You might have to do unseen questions, coaching module questions. You might have to solve some difficult questions because there will be some twisted questions, some questions with change values, some questions with change the diagram situation, how to deal with it. That only will come when you solve more questions beyond NCRT and PYQs. So what is very important you, for you to understand is that don't categorize. Sir, this is NCRT question. Sir, this is JMN's question. Sir, this is PYQ, sir. See, that is for beginners. Once you start understanding the real game, you will understand it's a game of practice and consistency. The more you practice, 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 you will lose the line of difference between whether it is NCRT or PYQ, for you, it will be more of a subject. For you, it will be like a question, problem, solution, how to tackle, how to think about it. And don't be scared to repeat the same question two or three times. Even toppers do that. Same question, same model, you are solving it three times, four times. Perfectly fine. Let it enter your head. This is what is very important and that is what will push your score beyond 140, 150. Understand that. Now, I know many of you might have backlogs by now or maybe you might have uh, uh, realized over the pa uh, past few minutes, sir, 
you know i realized that ncert is important i am a state board student i am a different board student or you know i was not prioritizing boards at all i was just looking at coaching module only i know now the importance of boards or ncert and pycs sir can you help me with that definitely see guys for the next few weeks just focus on the current syllabus whatever is being taught in the school or you know your coaching focus on that but meanwhile also look back at the previous things that you have missed you have to catch up as early as possible give yourself one month time not more than that that's good enough and i feel with that proper scheduling and giving up a little bit of luxury and sacrificing you can make up for the lost syllabus and if you want to take help let me tell you we are ready to offer you a complete mid term crash course so many of you might have a mid term exam and either your board exams would have taken a back seat or your need preparation has taken a back seat so you should be up to date with both the syllabus i am offering you the complete mid term crash course where you will cover all the chapters and concepts you will start from basics right from chapter number 1 also you will be exam ready within a month so all your backlogs get over not just that all the teachers who have been consistently producing results so we have teachers who teach for neat separately je separately as well as board separately and these teachers have been ensuring the improvement in the scores be it any competitive exam and that's why so many of our kids have been scoring about 90% and above year over year so my dear students take the help of this mid term crash course which is starting right now and cover your complete syllabus including mathematics some of you might be pc mb students with part test full syllabus test as well as the soft copy material of tatva for 11th and 12th standard students it's for 1499 rupees only all right if you have some junior grade students or friends you can let them know about the same thing for the respective standards it's for 1299 rupees so this is at a very affordable price so that you become a topper you cover up your backlogs you are back on track you can start focusing both on your competitive exam as well as boards okay so that link is there in the description box again do not forget to check out the mid term crash course link now what i want to know from you is also are you just going to be happy with ncert and pyqs with teacher notes or are you going to do ncert pyqs and v1 i hope you found the answer in this particular video thank you for liking and thank you for subscribing this is your captain shreyas signing off as the lowest bar